Okay, good morning. So one thing that I want to mention yesterday, I decided the quiz for you as well. I don't know, have you seen that or not? Those I'm quizzes sorry. are not compulsory, but I would recommend you try to do them. And then after the due date is passed, then I will release this course and then you will get which question you have done it right, which question you have done it wrong, and which option was correct in case you have done it wrong. Yes? Uh, and then if you have questions, you can come to my study time and try to answer them. Okay, so that is good to know. By the way, that quiz is also available for you if you join that Google Classroom. Uh, okay, so we continue. This would be probably the last session that I will talk about the absolute values because we have to end it somewhere and this absolute value goes forever if I want to talk for it. Uh, if you remember, we learned about the concept of the absolute value. We learned about geometrical interpretation of the absolute value and we learned how to solve equations including the absolute value sign which was the most important part and then if you re I remember correctly we started just to talk about solving inequalities containing the absolute value signs I was able to give you two examples very simple ones but we didn't have time to go through all the details that we're supposed to go according to your book so what we do today, we want to continue this, but before that, let me see, uh, we, where were we? Yes, here. Uh, so let me just with that ex start with an example today and then increase the level of the difficulty of the examples and then match with the level of the book, okay? So example, solve the following inequalities. In the book, they have just started from probably a little bit complicated one. Uh, but I want you, of course, the method described in the book is the most general method to solve these inequalities, and it will always work. But as I told you, I really want you to understand, uh, sometimes you can do it much faster. Okay, so let me just give you some of those examples. I don't remember what example I chose, but let me start with, again, the simplest possible inequality. So I will write absolute value of x, for example, is less than or equal to... Uh, by the way, let me start playing around a little bit. So I would write this. What do I mean by solve an inequality? An inequality? It means that you are supposed to provide all possible x values so that if I plug it here it becomes true that's the meaning of solving an inequality if you by chance you get one of them and that one works that is not the meaning of solving solve means finding all of them okay so if I ask you to solve this what is your answer yes no, solution. no solutions yes because we learned that output of absolute value is non-negative so how it pos how is it possible that it becomes less than minus three it doesn't mean that you raise your hand in the exam and say that Bobak, this question is wrong no this question is completely right it means that there are no solutions to this inequality okay so no solutions so what you need to write no solutions of course, if you want to motivate me, you just write one line. You, you should say that absolute, the output of an absolute value is non-negative, so it cannot be less than negative 3, and that's this. Yes? And that is the answer. Okay, now let us make it more interesting. Now, number 2, what can I write absolute value of x less than or equal to 3? I hope that you understand that I cannot get rid of the absolute value sign here because I don't know x yet. I am looking for those possible values for x, so it means that I don't know them yet. And then when I don't know them yet, I am not sure that if this is positive or negative, so I am not allowed to remove this absolute value sign, yes? Just because I don't know the sign here. But here, this is so simple that you can use your geometrical point of view. Do you remember what was the geometric interpretation of absolute value of x? Yes? Distance to the origin. Distance from the point corresponding to x to the origin. Yeah. Okay, so when you are saying that I want to have absolute value of x less than or equal to 3, it means that if I look here on the x-axis, 
here is zero. I want to for I want to find all possible points on this axis so that the distance from those points to the origin is equal to three or less than three. So it is not that hard. Yes. For example, uh, I can say that okay, if this is one, this is two, this is three. Okay. So is this point acceptable for this inequality? Yes. Yes, because the distance from this point to this one is exactly 3, and 3 is acceptable here. So that is one of those points. Do you think that this point is acceptable? Yes. Because the distance from here to here is even less than 3, and it is acceptable, yes? So all these points, I hope that you agree with me that all of these points so far are acceptable. But are these the only ones? No, because there are also other points on the other side, even though they are negative, but who cares about the negative? I care about the distance, okay? So it means that if I go here, it's minus 3. Is minus 3 one of those points acceptable? Yes, because the distance from minus 3 to the origin is exactly equal to 3 again, and 3 is acceptable in this case. And all these points that you see in between are also acceptable. So in general, I hope that you immediately understand that this uh, blue line segment represents all possible values of x, yes? Am I allowed to go a little bit to the right? No. no, because my distance to the origin will increase and goes above 3. Am I allowed to go be below minus 3 for the same reason? No. So then, if I ask you what is the answer, you really don't need to solve it. You can imagine geometrically and write the answer. So what the answer is? What do you write this answer? I would say all x's that are less than or equal to 3, but at the same time greater than or equal to minus 3 are acceptable. So that would be my answer. Yes or no? Yeah. Okay. Let me just write another simple one. So number, uh, number 3. Let me just uh, do here. If I write 2x... Uh, let me write it this way. First, x minus 1 less than, less than 5, for example. How do you solve this inequality? This is the way that the book has started the general method, but still you don't need to have the general method here. Okay, so you have an absolute value here. This you can call it the box in your head. So what you see is this. Okay, so what can I say about this box again? Absolute value of what is included in the box is less than 5. So what can I say about what is inside the box? Yes? Just say the box is between minus 5 and 5, but not equal. To not equal. Minus. The same reason, yes? The distance of what is inside the box to the origin should be less than 5. Yes? It's strictly less than 5. So what it means that, this is what I want you to understand geometrically, not right so much. It means that what is inside the box, which is x minus 1, should be somewhere between minus 5 and 5. This I want you to understand. If you understand, I can, you can save my breath. Otherwise, you can ask questions. Do you understand that? Yes or no? Yes. Okay, but this is not the solution, because in the solution, I am looking for x values. These are x minus 1 values. So I want to get rid of this minus 1. I want to have x alone. So what is the natural step to take? I add one unit to here, to here, and there. Yes, so it becomes minus 4. x minus 1, I add one unit to it. It becomes exactly what I need, which is x. And then I add one unit to it, which is 6. So that would be the answer to this. Yes? Yes or no? Yes. Okay, now, for example, let me make it a little bit harder. So, what happens if I have this? Uh, absolute value of 3x minus 2 less than uh, or equal to 6. I hope that it doesn't take that much time from you now. So, what is the meaning? Again, the same thing. I don't know what is this, but I know that the absolute value of that is less than 6, it means the distance from this box to the origin is less than 6. So what can I conclude about the value in the box? The value in the box 
is somewhere between minus six, six and six. six. Yes? But this is, even though it is completely true, but it is not the answer because x is not alone yet. So what I do, I want to get rid of that 2, and I want to get rid of that 3. So what should I do? First, let me get rid of this 2. How should I get rid of this negative 2? Add, two to, add to everything. So it becomes minus 4. If I add 2 to this, 3x will be left. If I add 2 to this, it becomes how much? But now I want to make x alone, I have to divide everything, divide everything by 3, then I am done. I divide this by 3, I divide this by 3, I divide this by 3. So that would be the answer. Yes? Okay, but let me remind you a little bit about different scenarios. So let me again ask you one question. So number 5. What, what do you think if I write this in the exam and ask you to solve it? Absolute value of x greater than negative 5. What do you write as answer? I am asking you, give me all possible numbers so that when I put them instead of x, this becomes a true equality. All numbers. In inequality, all numbers. Yes, every number that I put instead of x, absolute value of x becomes positive. When it becomes positive, it is automatically greater than minus 5. Yes, so you need to write answer is uh, all real numbers. Yes. Okay. Now let us do a little bit more interesting thing. So number six, I want to ask you the same question. What happens if I ask you absolute value of x is greater than five? Again, you can use geometry to solve it more faster. So what is the interpretation here? This time I am looking for those points on the x-axis whose distance to the origin is greater than 5. So it's not hard to imagine this at all, yes? Here, this is the origin, and for example, let us assume that this is 5. I want to keep my distance to the origin greater than 5. Am I allowed to be somewhere here? No. No. Am I allowed to be at 5 itself? No, no. no because this is strictly greater than. So where can I be? For example, I can be on any point after 5, yes? So what happens? It means that this time I am not allowed to choose 5, so I need to show it if I want to represent it by a hollow circle. It means that I am emphasizing that 5 is not acceptable. But any number on the right is acceptable, agree? Yes. Why? Because it doesn't matter which blue point I choose, its distance to the origin is greater than 5. But is this the only solution? No. 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 We can have another one from where to where? Minus 5. Negative. Yes, if I choose that one here, uh, this would be minus 5, and then that would be that one. So either I should be here or there. Okay, so that's very important. So how should I write the answer? X is, X is greater than 5. X is greater than 5. Either or. Or. This is very important. This or has to be written. X is less than minus 5. Yes? Uh, by the way, when I write this, this is a shorthand notation of writing minus 3 is less than or equal to X and X is less than or equal to 3. But in this AND form, I can combine them in that way. Yes? So, do not combine OR in any mean, in any way. You have to write it with OR. But in AND, you can write this, or you can combine them in the shorter form in this way. But for OR, you have to keep it in OR form. Yes? Yes? Can I what? Okay, so I ask you solve this inequality i am asking you for all possible numbers so that if you replace x with those numbers this is guaranteed to be true yes but i don't need to think hard 
because we know that even though x might be negative, but we learn that the output of absolute value is a non-negative number. And if the output is a non-negative number, it is guaranteed to be greater than minus 5 for any choice that I have. So that's the answer, all real numbers. It's understandable? Yes? Okay, so these uh, simple cases, you really don't need to solve the method described in the book, okay? These simple cases, I really myself just do it in, in this way. But of course, there are some cases which is inevitable. We have to do whatever we did, more or less similar to equations. Okay, now let us start solving one of those problems. Uh, so, uh, what we can do here, uh, let me write this inequality, number seven. Uh, let me write absolute value of x minus 1. Let us keep it simple. Uh, 2x less than 2x. Okay, I want to solve this inequality. Uh, first of all, I want you to understand why the previous method will not work. You might say that, okay, uh, x minus 1 should be between 2x and minus 2x. Yes? Uh, this is not completely correct because we don't know x yet, yes? If x turns out to be a negative number, the right-hand side becomes automatically negative. And if it is negative, absolute value less than a negative number doesn't work at all. But if you accidentally want to solve it, you get an answer. So the reason that this method is not working because we don't know if 2x is positive or negative. And it is crucial, because if 2x turns out to be negative, I don't need to solve anything. I would say it isn't, there are no solutions. And if x is positive, then yes, you can do that. So this is why you shouldn't think that, okay, so the distance to the origin should be less than 2x. Because there is no guarantee that 2x is a positive number. So in that case, in that case, you have to go and use exactly this, not exactly, very similar method to what you learned for equality. Do you remember, in principle, by now, you should be able to solve this equation if I ask you. Yes, do you know how should we do that? Do you remember? I, we ask ourselves which point is important for the absolute value here. That is 1. And then you go one, you divide it into two cases, you solve one problem on the left-hand side of one, you solve one problem on the right-hand side, yes? And then at the end, you will admit the solution if it fulfills this criterion, yes? Is that honestly? Do you remember or not? Yes? Yeah. Okay, so I want to do similar thing here. Okay, so if I want to do similar thing, what I have to do, I need to see that which point is which number is important for this absolute value. What do I mean by this? Because you know that I have to get rid of absolute value sign. So I have to be certain about the sign. Is it positive or negative? X minus 1, is it positive or negative? I cannot answer this question definitely because if X is greater than 1, this becomes positive. If X is less than 1, this becomes negative. So I have to solve the problem in two ways. What I'm suggesting you is to draw an x-axis and that number which is important for this absolute value is 1. Put 1 somewhere. And then solve the problem here and solve the problem there. Of course, in principle, you solve the problem in three cases. Less than 1, at 1 itself, after 1. But I told you, if you remember, let us not to do uh, this uh, division. So I would write x less than 1 region, x greater than or equal to 1 region. Yes? Why is it not negative 1? That's the important point. No, because the, the value becomes 0 at 1, not minus 1. Okay. Because if I put x equals to 1, this becomes 0. So when x equals to 1 makes the, uh, makes the expression 0, it means that after 1 and before 1 will change it to positive or negative. Yes? Okay, so what I have to do, I have to consider the case where x is less than 1. Okay, so you can just solve the problem on this. And I told you that if you want to, you can put equality here, not there. 
you can put equality here and there. That's up to you. But you have to consider all scenarios. Okay, x less than 1. Okay, can you tell me what happens to x minus 1? When I am on the left-hand side of 1, is this expression, which is here, positive or negative? Negative. Negative, yes. And then, can I get rid of absolute value sign under this condition? Yes? Yes. Because I know x minus 1 is negative, I can get rid of that, but the price that I have to pay is to what? Negative. Multiplied by negative. Yes? And then let me multiply this negative sign in. It becomes positive 1, negative x. Okay? So then what does it mean? This means that my equation, my inequality, turns into a simpler inequality. Instead of absolute value of x minus 1, I can write 1 minus x. Instead of that, I put 1 minus x, and then I have less than 2x. Yes? Yes? And then I have to solve this very, very simple inequality which you learned in Math 1C. So what I have to do, I move 2x to the left, I move 1 to the right. So then what happens, it becomes minus x is already there. I move this one, it becomes minus 2x. I keep this inequality and I move 1 to the right, it becomes minus 1. Let me simplify, minus 3x less than minus 1. But I have to make x alone if I want to solve it. So I have to divide by negative, negative 3. And then the important thing that you learned in math, math 1c, when you divide an inequality by a negative number, you have to make sure that you know that you have changed the sign from less than to greater than. Is that right? This we learned in math, three, and I, uh, math 1C, and I also, also remember, re, uh, recall that last time. So then, this becomes just x, this becomes greater than, and this minus and that minus are cancelled, this is one third. Okay, this is the hard part. Now, not hard part, this is the technical part. Do you remember, when I asked you to solve this, it was easy. At the end, you do not get inequality. For equality, you get equality. And then you check if this number satisfies this condition or not. If this satisfies this condition, you admit it, accept it. Otherwise, you just ignore that. Yes, that would be a false rule. But here, how many numbers are there? Infinite. Infinitely many. So which one I should choose, which one I should leave? If it's below 1, it should work. Okay. And over uh, bigger, greater than one third. Yes. And so you did it very right. So that's correct. So that was the... So you made my life easier. <laughs> so x, on the one hand, x should be less than 1 because all the arguments coming after this line, it, it depends on this statement. So on the one hand, x has to be less than 1. On the other hand, x has to be greater than one third. Okay? So then it means that all the numbers that are greater than one third, but are smaller than one, are acceptable. Yes? So what I need to write, so can you write me, I would write partial answer. What is the partial answer? Partial answer one. So, as Gustav mentioned, so how should I write the partial answer, finally? On the one hand, it should be greater than one-third. On the other hand, it should be below one. So, how should I write that? One-third greater than... It should x than. between those numbers. Yeah. Between always means this. Yes? So what you need, actually, you find the intersection of these two regions on the x-axis. So I will talk about that later. So that is the partial answer that you get here. But the problem is not finished. You have to solve it on the other region as well. So how should I do that? I go and check the other one, x is greater than or equal to 1, 
So what do I mean by this? It means that x minus 1 is greater than or equal to 0. Please let me know if you don't understand something. I solved the problem here. Now I have to solve the problem there. Yes? So if x is greater than or equal to 1, I hope that you agree with me that x minus 1 is greater than or equal to 0. Yes? And then, if this is the case, what can I write for absolute value? Do I need the absolute value sign hanging over my head? No. no. I can just simply remove that. Why? Because x minus 1 is non negative. Yes? And now I go back to my inequality again. That was my inequality. Okay? And then. What can I do? This time, instead of absolute value, I just replace x minus 1. I just substitute x minus 1. And then I have less than 2x. And let us solve this inequality. So I move 2x to the left. And then I move 1 to the right. It becomes positive. So it becomes negative x is greater than 1. So what can I write now? x should be greater than 1. No, be careful. Minus x is greater than 1. I have to make x alone oh, by minus. dividing by minus 1. Yes? When I divide minus x by minus 1, of course it becomes x. If I divide 1 by minus 1, it becomes minus 1. But um, x is less than the sign has to change because I have divided by a negative sign. Okay, now what is your interpretation here? I, I'm asking you about partial answer 2. No solution? Yes. I would say empty. Or no solution. So, might be no solutions here because later we talk about sets they call it empty no solution yes why is that because on the one hand x should be greater than or equal to one on the other hand x should be less than minus one it cannot happen yes Okay. No, I have to switch the sign. That was not accidentally. Because whenever, this is very, very important from math things, if you divide by a negative number, or you're, 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 uh, thank you very much. <laughs> yes, thank you very much for correcting me. Yes, I shouldn't have done that. And then that it changes the whole problem. Yes, let us see. Thank you very much. Okay, so what is the answer now? Is that right? Okay, now let us get rid of these no solutions. Is there any solutions now? If there is, how do you write the partial answer number two? Anyone else? By the way, it was very, very crucial. Thank you for correcting me. Otherwise, I have spoiled this ex uh, ex example. Yes. Just say. No one? Abdullah, do you want to say something? Oh. No. So you are saying that on the one hand, x should be greater than or equal to 1. On the other hand, x should be greater than minus 1. Do you think that I am saying something extra extraneous? No. Yes, mathematically I am saying something which is not necessary. Could you repeat that? On the one hand, this has been solved under this condition. So on the one hand, this condition is met, should be satisfied. On the other hand, this condition should be satisfied as well. Yeah. Yes? Okay, now, what is the partial answer? Let us be clear. So what do you write for the partial answer? Of course, you can write this. If you, <laughs> if you don't know what to do, you can write this and... And let it for me to solve, but I will not give you the full mark if you write this. Yes, Abdul Um X is greater or equal to 1. Greater or equal to 1, yes. We don't need that one. 
Is that understandable? Because when you say x is greater than or equal to 1, automatically this is guaranteed. Yes? Because if a number is greater than 1, it is clear that it's also greater than minus 1. So do I need to emphasize that? No. No. Is that understandable? So the intersection between these two is just one of them. So what I write here as the partial answer, I would write x is greater than or equal to 1. I want you to understand what is going on. This tells you that on the one hand, x should be greater than 1, and I have to emphasize that x is greater than minus 1. But the first condition also contains the second condition somehow. When I say x is greater than or equal to 1, automatically it means x is definitely greater than minus 1 as well. So I don't need to overemphasize that. Yes? Is that clear? So that would be the partial answer. But then, what is the answer to the inequality? I didn't want partial answers. I want to write a swar at the end and I want to wait for you. Yeah, I just want you to give you time to think. Because if you can find it yourself, then I will not have any problems. You understand what is going on. Let me ask you, if I ask you to solve an equality, what do I mean by solving an inequality? It means, yeah, just repeat it until you understand. By solving an inequality, what do I mean? I ask you to solve an inequality, what do I mean? Find the solution for all the possible values. All, this is very emphasized on that, find all possible values for excess, so that turns that inequality to, to a true statement. So I want all of them. Yes? So it means that you want all of them. You got one part, part of all here. You find another part of the whole here. But now you want the whole scenario. So what should I do? Write the first one, then or. Okay. Or. That's it. Yes, that's it. But I want you to understand that, yes? So the answer would be one less than this one or that one yes is that understandable yeah. so your understanding is perfect but because mathematics also deals with beauty and being brief this is not the way that i write it even though that's 100 percent correct but i will deduct some points if you write it like that mm -hmm. because i want you to learn something more can i combine can i write these two statements in a more shorter way Yes? Wait, well, did it just say earlier you can't write or together or was it after? No, no, no. Here you can do something. Oh, you can't. You can, something. Yeah, you can do something, not write them together. Yes? If you write x uh, greater than or equal to, no, less than or equal to. No, it doesn't. Yes, yes, you are right. Just, no, just say it. Am I? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Continue. Well, I thought if you put uh, x is uh, less than or equal to 1 in the first one. No, so exactly. that was no, that was not probably what yeah. I was thinking. Yes. Could you put less, more, and equal? To, do we have any sign for that? No, no. <laughs> no, but this cannot happen because you cannot have all of these three signs in one symbol because it is always false. Yes. <coughs> Isn't it just x is greater than one third? Yes. Yes, you don't need to write so much. It? it means that this can be simplified as x greater than one third. This is what I expect you to understand and write. So in the first part of the answer you said it's less than one. No, yes, yes, but I'm saying that the partial answer tells you that after one third up to one is acceptable. Yeah. Also one and after one is acceptable. So this means that everything after one third is acceptable. Okay. Yes? 
this is crucial this is very important so what you do partial answers you find intersection between these and then after you had your partial answers you combine them to find the whole picture and that is exactly the same thing so what Gustav mentioned is completely right but I want you to learn to improve your skills about art of simplification in mathematics that's an art you need to know how to simplify things instead of saying so much which one is easier for your brain to process this sentence or that sentence don't say this sentence if you want it. That sentence is much easier to process. And if it is possible to replace something simpler for something more complicated, you never, you should do it always in mathematics. Everyone understands why this is the same thing. Because what is this telling you? For example, if you want to understand that, one third is somewhere here. One is a little bit larger. I don't know. No, one is here. This tells you that those points hollow here and hollow here and everything in between is this one but then this one tells you that let me change my color this one tells you that one and after one is acceptable so i need to change the color here and after one is acceptable now i if i ask you what part is definitely acceptable of course, you can write it in two steps, but you can say simpler everything after one third. Yes? Yeah. Is that understandable? So what you do every time you find partial answers, and after you found partial answers, you combine them, you append them together. Some cases, you are not it's not possible to summarize it, but if it is possible to summarize it, I expect you to summarize them. Yes? Is that understandable? Yes or no? Okay, so that is uh, an inequality. Uh, so let me pause this video and see if I... Let me repeat my question because not recorded. So my question is that if I ask you, I don't know if Geo... By the way, I think GeoGebra is also capable of solving this, but there is no solve inequality. The same word solve will also work with inequality. We will check that. But assume that you don't know how to do that, but you know how to graph these things. How do you find graphically what we have done so far? Okay, so uh, so let me let me try to turn on GeoGebra. But I want you to predict uh, what you want to see on GeoGebra. Okay, first of all, let me let me see that if GeoGebra is able to solve that one for us, okay? So if I remember, so we go to here, we change the view. Okay, by the way, I need to know that if uh, the point is that I cannot see what is there. Yeah, hopefully it is recorded, okay. Yeah, okay, so this is problem 1098, part C. And of course, if you cancel this yourself you really understood everything about the absolute value sign uh, and then we don't need to be worried about that much so i think everything is clear so i want to give you a little bit of time of course let me just tell you something don't go for uh, wrong from the beginning so how many numbers are important for solving this inequality two two one of them is negative not two not negative two two, two and four and four so how many regions I need to consider? Four. No, be careful. Oh, two. Three. No, three. 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 Because before two, oh. between two and four, and after four. Okay. Yes? Yes or no? Of course, you also need to consider the points themselves, but you can include them in one of them. Okay, let, let us not say something more, but be careful, please, because this would be a little bit tedious. Uh, but I, if you can succeed to solve it and find the correct answer, then it means that you really understood everything related to absolute value signs. So let me just raise it here, and then you can start solving. I give you 10 minutes. If you need more, I will give you more later, okay? Okay, so if you don't mind, let us start uh, solving it. At least you can help me what we are supposed to do. So we we'll realize that two points on the x-axis would be relevant for solving this inequality one of them is 
the one that makes this one equals to zero, which is x equals to four, and the other one is x equals to two, yes? So you just, I think that even though it's not compulsory, but I would recommend you to draw a diagram, and you don't need to be actually, be careful about other points. What the points are important for you are two and four, and just keep the order. You don't need to be careful about even scaling or something. You need to keep the order only. So two is on the left hand side of four. And then you need to solve the problem here, which x is less than 2, here, which x is between 2 and 4, and here, where x is greater than 4. But if I do this, I am just ignoring these two points. I have to consider those points as well. Either you can put equality in all of them, but I prefer not to put the equality here, here, not to put the equality here, there. That's, of course, optional. If you want to, you can put equalities from the beginning to the end, but you're considering cases uh, more number of times. Okay, then what you have to do, you need to come here. <coughs> if x minus 2, if x is less than 2, what are important for me are x minus 2 and x minus 4. So hopefully you agree with me that let me write it in two uh, ways. So x minus 2 is negative if x is less than 2. And x minus 4 is also negative. Agree? If x is less than 2, both of them becomes negative. And if this is negative, then if I ask you what is absolute value of x minus 2, you would say that I can remove the absolute value, but I have to multiply it by a negative sign. And then I multiply this negative sign, it becomes positive 2, negative x. And then when x minus 4 is negative, I can do the same thing. x minus 4 becomes negative x minus 4, and then it becomes 4 minus x. So, any, any questions so far? So when I chose x equals uh, x less than 2, then automatically both of these expressions inside becomes become negative and if they are negative the same rule applies yes i take the absolute value but the price that i have to pay is to multiply a negative sign here and there. yes and what you need to do you need to rewrite your inequality but this time using these expressions instead so i would write 2x Instead of absolute value of x minus 4, I just write plus 4 minus x. Yes? On the right hand side, instead of absolute value of x minus 2, I just write 2 minus x. And then I have plus 8. But this becomes a math 1c problem. Here I even don't need to bother about prayer brackets because this is positive, so you don't need to really put it there. Okay, and then I have to simplify. So how should I simplify that? Minus x, x, and then I have 4 greater than or equal minus x, and this is 10. So I move minus x to the left. Let us do some parts in our head. Minus x to the left becomes positive x, and positive x becomes 2x greater than or equal. Let us move 4 to the other side. Minus 4 and 10 becomes 6. And finally, I want to make x alone, so I have to divide by 2, so it becomes greater than or equal to 3. But then I have to write partial answer 1. So what is the partial answer 1? Wait. On the one hand, yes? And if you divide, don't you have to switch the sign? No, no, I divide by 2. 2 is positive. Oh, okay. Yes? Is that right? I think so. Okay. Now, this is a little bit, uh, so I want you to ask you, on the one hand, x should be less than 2. On the other hand, should x be less than, greater than or equal to 3? Then it means? No solution. No solution. Empty. Yes? Okay. And then, what I do, I go to the middle region. In the middle region, let us see what happens. Now, tell me, what can I write about x minus 2, positive or negative, what can I write about x minus 4? If I tell you that x is somewhere between 2 and 4, what can I say about x minus 2? Positive. 
yes, it is positive or equal to zero. But what about x minus four? Negative. Negative. But if this is non-negative, I don't need absolute value sign at all. It becomes x minus two itself. But this is the same story. Absolute value of x minus four becomes negative of this one, which is four minus x. And I have to solve this equation again. So two n, this inequality again. Two x plus this one, which is four minus x, is greater than or equal to absolute value of x minus two is x minus two in this case. And then I have an eight at the end. So let me simplify that. This minus two x and two x becomes, sorry, this becomes x. And then I have four. And this is also very strange. Uh, x minus, uh, so this is, I wanted to, this is a very probably hard problem. So x plus 6. Yes? So then what happens? If, uh, are you checking my calculations or not? I move it to the left. It becomes x. Then minus x. The x vanishes. Yeah. It becomes 0. Greater than or equal to 6 minus 4 is to what? Two. 2. Okay. Now... How many of you got this? I want to check my cap. Okay, good. So yeah. it means that I haven't done anything mistakes. So because I've done okay, now what is the interpretation here? On the one hand, this should happen. On the other hand, 0 should be greater than or equal to 2. So what's the interpretation? No solution. No solutions again. This cannot happen. Yes? This cannot happen. Yes? I am looking for those x's between these two so that make this right but this cannot be made right so it doesn't matter which x's i am looking for so the partial answer this is a little bit strange hopefully we have to check our answers using GeoGebra. so partial answer two is what no solution no solution again uh, Yeah, let us see how it goes. And now we go x greater than or equal to 4. Uh, what happens? What can I write about x minus 2, positive or negative? If x is greater than or equal to 4, definitely x minus 2 is positive, so I really don't need absolute value sign at all. It becomes equal to itself. The same story here. Yes, and now I have to rewrite my uh, inequality but using this. Instead of 2x, I just write 2x. Instead of absolute value of x minus 4, I write x minus 4. Instead of absolute value of x minus 2, I write x minus 2. And instead of 8, I put 8. Let us solve this in our head a little bit. So here I have 2x plus x is 3x. I move this x to the left, it becomes 2x. And then I have greater than or equal to uh, uh, minus 2 plus 8 is 6. I move this to the right, it becomes positive 10. 10. Yes. And then divide by, it becomes greater than or equal to 5. Yes? How many of you got this answer by? Okay, so it means that you are on the right track. Okay, so then what is the partial answer three? Three? Partial answer number three. What is the answer? On the one hand, x should be greater than or equal to four. On the other hand, x should be greater than or equal to five. So what do you write as the partial answer? x greater than or equal to 4 and x greater than or equal to 5. Do I need to emphasize on both of them or no, one, one would be enough? Equal to four. Uh, no. No. Okay. If you say greater than or equal to 4, there is no guarantee that this will satisfy. Hmm. Because greater than or equal to 4 might be 4.1. 4.1 satisfies this one but not no, that okay. one. Don't jump from 4 to 5. Okay, so I have to write x greater than or equal to 5. five. The partial answer would be this one. Okay, and then the final answer. 
So what I have to write as the final answer, of course, this in this case, it is very simple. If we haven't done anything wrong in our calculations, so what's the final answer? Greater than or equal to 5. Yes, because the other parts are empty. Yes, so x greater than or equal to 5. Yeah, because of the nature of this problem, it doesn't hurt if we ch check it using GeoGebra. Uh, so we go here. There's no comment. hope that we haven't done a very bad mistake here. We so we go here. I think uh, it's right. I checked it before. It's right. Is it right? Yeah, I checked it all. Not on Georgia, but that's also it's the same thing. Okay, okay. So let me let me just try to see here. So we go to view and then we go to cast view. So let me write this equation here. So what is our equation? Our equation is two x I would write solve this is a little bit strange because it is not an equation, but in GeoGebra, it knows how to solve inequality using the same syntax, yes? So 2x plus uh, ABS of uh, what? Abs. Of x minus what? 4. Yes, yeah. x minus 4. And then I should write greater than or equal to, which I have to use probably this one. And then I have absolute value of x minus 2 x minus 2 thank you for helping and then what plus, plus eight. 8 plus 8 plus 8 yes yes x greater than or equal to 5 so our answer is correct you see it was it was a nice problem if you couldn't got these things it means that most of the things so how many of you could get the correct answer at the end yeah that's very good and let me just, I know that you are hungry, me too, but let us just test this idea of graphing things. So I need to draw the graph of this function. So y is equal to, can I copy and paste? Okay. Yes, oops. Uh, copy input, let us paste it here. But the paste option does not work. No, why can you copy? <laughs> Might be you can copy paste it in the same window. But y equals to uh, we have two x and then we have plus a b s and then we have x minus four. Yes. So, oh, this this is not expectable. This shouldn't be a line. Ah, oh, it is not. It's a broken line. Because it was it was very strange for me that if this turns out to be a straight line. It is not, it's a broken line, yes? And then you have another one, uh, which is absolute value of x minus 2. Absolute value of x minus 2. Plus, plus 8. 8. Plus 8, yes. Am I right? Yes. And this one. So it's a little bit more uh, involved here. So this is uh, what we see. And then I want this one to be higher than that one. So I want to have the green one higher than the red one. Yes. And it is clear that this part, before that part it doesn't work because the red one is above this one. But the right part works. So this point we need to know which point is that, yes? So we need to find the intersection of those points. So here we go to the point of intersection. I click on the red one, I click on the green one, I get the intersection point, and you see, you read the x-coordinate. And the x-coordinate is exactly equal to 5. So it means that after this point, we get what we want to. Yes? Is that clear? So it is important to understand it graphically as well. It's very important to understand what does it mean when you solve inequalities graphically. Thank you very much. And please take the quiz serious, even though it is not compulsory, but it is good for your own benefit. And your health. Thank you.